let's talk about Titan, the largest moon of Saturn and the second largest moon in the solar system. Focusing on some of the most recent updates and most recent discoveries about this unusual moon that essentially presented in a slightly different way from what we initially thought or help us understand it a little bit better. But first, let's briefly discuss why this moon is so incredible and why this is probably the most fascinating object except for planet Earth in the entire solar system. This is the only other object out there that we know of that has a liquid cycle on its surface. But as you might already know, it's not water. It's methane. This moon has a very strange methane cycle that creates liquid methane leaks as well as ice, snow and even rain. Not to mention that this place also has weather. For example, there have been multiple sightings of various clouds. But obviously, once again, this is not water vapor clouds. These are methane clouds. And more importantly, this object has a really thick atmosphere. It's about four times denser than planet Earth that produces atmospheric pressure that's about 1.5 times higher than on the surface of Earth, mostly containing nitrogen and methane once again. With the actual surface here, the crust, not being made out of silicates or rocks like on planet Earth, but instead being made entirely out of water and several other icy compounds that the scientists learned a little bit more about in some of the recent studies. And so here one of the investigations was really in regards to how the icy surface and various hydrocarbons on the surface tend to build up and produce various features. For example, not so long ago, we've discussed this new map of Titan that sort of shows us all sorts of different features on the surface. And you'll notice that for the most part, dunes seem to be at the equator, whereas the middle latitudes are mostly plains. But then we also have a lot of labyrinth-like structures, mostly located near the poles. And so the scientists weren't really clear at first why this is so, but it became a little bit more clear when they started to produce similar ice particles right here on planet Earth by using various experiments. And this was mostly done in order to understand how various surface structures here develop and what to expect from these surface structures when we actually have a mission to this moon in 2034. We'll discuss this in a few seconds. And so here, by trying to recreate similar conditions to Titan inside a glass cylinder on planet Earth, first of all, researchers discovered that two specific molecules seem to be produced on Titan in large amounts. Acetonitriles, or methyl cyanides, and propionitriles, or ethyl cyanides. Both of these are a combination of methane and a lot of different carbon molecules. But unlike on Earth, where they're both liquids, here they produce very specific ice crystals. And they very likely serve as a template for the assembly of a lot of other molecules and a lot of other bigger structures on Titan. And so basically, a lot of larger pebbles and rocks that would be mostly made out of ices were very likely created with these molecules as a foundation. And when looking at these compounds under Titan-like conditions, researchers realized that they do possess very different properties to normal ices on Earth. For example, they don't expand uniformly in every direction, mostly because they do not form symmetrical shapes. Which means that when ices grow on Titan, unlike ices on Earth, they very likely form somewhat unstable structures and possibly crack quite a lot. Which is something that needs to be considered for the upcoming Dragonfly mission, the helicopter that's going to be landing on Titan in 2034. Especially because a lot of these molecules will most likely accumulate on the helicopter itself and potentially get inside its propellers. And so understanding what they can do to propellers or what they can do to helicopter in general, as they basically freeze around it, is sort of important. For all we know, they might actually cause the failure of the mission within just a few days. And so knowing how these crystals form and how they interact with the surroundings will prevent a lot of hazards for a lot of future missions. At the same time, a lot of these materials will very likely contain very different mechanical properties, extremely different from silicates or from rocks on planet Earth, and thus even the landing here might be somewhat tricky. But at least for now, what the scientists wanted to figure out is exactly how some of these features on Titan form and why they only exist in certain regions and not others. So once again, why is it that we only have dunes at the equator but not in the polar regions? And the scientists behind the recent study in the description might have found some solutions to this problem. Unlike sand and unlike silicates, these hydrocarbon-based substances that also tend to form different sands and grains on Titan might actually form through the process known as sintering or frittage. The process of formation of larger chunks through heat and compression. 
And this basically forms organic grains or organic sand that's a little bit more fragile than sand on planet Earth, but can still function in a very similar way. It's also very different from typical snow or typical ice here on Earth. These are really more like sand grains than anything else. But unlike on other planets like Earth, Mars or Venus, where we do have a lot of silicates, these icy grains or icy sand seems to be mostly produced through sediments driven by the wind. Now because wind are a lot more common near the equator and not the poles, these windy regions will produce less sintering and therefore produce sand grains that are much smaller or much finer. And it's that fine sand that's needed to create dunes. But in the polar regions where there is not enough wind and the sediments produce larger and larger chunks, instead of winds we get different phenomena such as those unusual labyrinths. And so the size of sediments increases as you go from the equator all the way to the poles. At some point they start turning into rocks and this is where we get those plains in the mid latitudes. With those labyrinths potentially resembling something like this. This is a typical karst limestone here on earth and so on Titan it could be something similar but instead of rock it's the sedimental deposits from a lot of different ice particles. And so to answer the question of why there are so many different features depending on the latitude, it really seems to be the weather or specifically the wind. There seems to be an active sedimentary cycle that's going on right now influenced by the wind on the surface that seems to produce different features depending on the weather. With things like rivers and rainstorms also affecting some of these features and changing them even more, although exactly how this works is still unknown. Interestingly though, in this particular study they also find an example of similar effects right here on planet earth and it's not really related to sand at all. It's actually something we find in the ocean. Very unusual particles known as ooids, from Greek for egg stone. And these are essentially very tiny spheroidal particles, mostly made out of calcium carbonate and sometimes containing iron or phosphate based minerals. Here's what they look like inside a typical limestone sediment. And they sort of grow from different sediments in a very similar way to how a snowball grows in size. Tiny crystals accumulate over time, growing larger and larger and larger. And so very similar features most likely produce a lot of sedimental structures on Titan as well, with this chemical precipitation being the main force behind the formation of crystals on the surface of this moon. And as you can see from this image, they generally form particles that are relatively similar in size, but will differ in size depending on the region and depending on the chemical composition where they're created. Which once again kind of highlights why certain locations on Titan do look somewhat different. But what about the liquids or the lakes? Well here were some other discoveries that were somewhat surprising as well. Now Titan contains a lot of different methane lakes. But during the initial observations from the Cassini probe, some of the observations revealed unusual reflections coming from the lakes and from their surface, as if there was something floating on the surface. But when looking at those surfaces again a little bit later, those unusual features would disappear. And so by combining the data from Cassini with some of the recent experiments right here on planet Earth, the researchers might have solved this mystery of so-called magic islands. They seem to be frozen chunks of organic material. It's unclear exactly what kind of material, but they might be similar to what we just discussed a few minutes ago. And so here through the same process of sedimentation, clumps of icy matter very likely fall onto the lakes and also on the shore of these lakes, growing larger and larger in size. And the question here was, so okay, all of the size, would it actually float or sink? And though in theory it should sink because this is not water ice, this is methane ice or a lot of other icy compounds, their density is much higher than a liquid methane, a more thorough chemical analysis revealed that some of these organic compounds and organic ices would form crystals that would not instantly dissolve in the lake but instead form a kind of a porous structure or icy structures with a lot of holes and thus very low density. And so if these clumps are big enough, they can then fall onto the liquid methane and in essence produce iceberg-like formations that would float on the surface for at least some time. But because these structures are porous, the methane would leak inside of them and eventually make them sink, which is why they generally disappear after a few days. And so in essence here the scientists resolved this unusual mystery of magic islands through a very intriguing chemical analysis of these very mysterious ice particles that form on Titan. Although here once again not water ice, hydrocarbon ice. 
different properties and very likely completely different shapes and colors. With a separate study also discovering that close to these lakes there is usually quite a lot of weather effects as well. Now winds is something that we've discussed previously, but also very likely fog. Methane vapor that creates somewhat thin foggy formations that even creates a kind of a lake breeze that essentially drives the liquid cycle around the lakes. Although unlike planet Earth, these are very likely extremely weak in power, with the fog itself also barely visible. So for example, the evaporation rate here is relatively low, approximately 6 cm per year. But nevertheless, methane, and of course sunlight in this case, are the main drivers for a lot of weather effects on Titan, with quite a lot of these effects producing something similar to planet Earth. And so yeah, this is one of those objects in the solar system where you can technically have a forecast that says windy with a chance of rain, but also super cold. Here we're talking about temperatures of like minus 180 degrees Celsius or minus 290 Fahrenheit. So yeah, foggy, windy, rainy, ultra cold. And then we also had a few more discoveries in regards to how Titan is influenced by Saturn in terms of tidal effects and how a lot of these tidal interactions seem to form very similar effects to what we usually find when two continents rub against one another on planet Earth. On the left you see the example from California, the famous San Andreas Fault, but on the right you actually see similar effects on Titan. In the middle that's Ganymede. And so these strike-slip faults, where two different continents move past one another, represent very unique geological features that don't actually exist on a lot of objects out there, but they definitely exist on Titan, Ganymede, and Earth. And the effects from this shear deformation very likely heats up a lot of minerals underneath, potentially even creating chemical effects important for potential life to survive. These types of tidal effects essentially drive geological activity on these super cold objects and very likely form a lot of cracks inside the crust, which can then serve as a source for very important chemical reactions, potentially organic chemical reactions that might produce life. Although one of the main reasons all of this was investigated is to actually discover if the Dragonfly helicopter is going to be accidentally landing in one of these areas because it could be potentially dangerous due to somewhat hectic terrain. And turns out that the answer is most likely no. The location where the helicopter is going to be landing seems to be more or less flat and devoid of these structures. But nevertheless, these structures would be somewhat important if we did want to find life on this beautiful moon. Because here there is a slight chance that maybe there is life, but it's not based on water molecules, instead it's based on things like ammonia. Super super slow alien life, surviving and thriving in these frigid conditions, life that could hypothetically be found by the Dragonfly helicopter in 2034. Although some scientists even proposed a potential return mission that could maybe take a sample from this moon and send it back to Earth. This could essentially be a part of the Dragonfly mission and could be achieved pretty easily, assuming the secondary mission is accepted as well. And here, instead of bringing all of the fuels to launch the rocket, this sample return vehicle is actually going to be using liquid methane collected from the surface of Titan, along with oxygen from water ices that is going to be used to produce its own fuel to return to Earth. In other words, technically, we can produce everything we need for rocket fuel right there on Titan. Not to mention that some studies even suggested that one day, if we ever need more plastics, this is basically a perfect place to collect all of them. Maybe sometimes in the future, Titan could become a hub for plastic manufacturing. Because this entire moon is basically one huge chunk of hydrocarbons. A super exciting place with a lot of mysteries and a place that we'll be talking more about as we get closer and closer to that upcoming mission that's going to begin in 2027 and land here in 2034. And so until future discoveries or until more unusual mysteries from this beautiful moon, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.